What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Today's video is one that I've wanted to do for a little while now and there's a few of you in the comments that have mentioned it before. It's pretty common knowledge that in lots of places around the world, sharks tend to linger around shipwrecks or are sighted pretty soon after a shipwreck. I think the main one that probably everyone thinks of straight away is the USS Indianapolis and the shark attacks revolving around that incident are pretty well documented. But quite a few people have asked down the years, were there any shark attacks after the Titanic sunk. I think it's quite a cool topic to explore because there are people that sit on both sides of the argument for this one. So today we're going to have a look at the events that unfolded on that freezing cold night of April 15th 1912. We're going to have a look at some of the evidence that's available to us and some of the shark species that might have been in the area at the time and we're going to try and answer the question were there actually any shark attacks after the Titanic sunk? The Titanic is probably one of if not the most famous ship in the world. You won't meet many people who haven't heard of it. And it's well documented to be one of the deadliest maritime disasters in history. But if for some strange reason there's anyone out there watching this video who has never heard of the Titanic, I'll briefly break it down for you. The ship itself was one of the largest in the world at the time, capable of carrying just under three and a half thousand people. And rather unfortunately at the time, it was dubbed by some people to be practically unsinkable. On the night of the 14th of April 1912, the Titanic was about four days into her maiden voyage when she struck an iceberg in the North Atlantic Ocean. The iceberg sliced into the hull of the ship on the starboard side, buckling and catastrophically damaging the plates and rivets, causing the ship to sink in two hours and 40 minutes. Unfortunately, it didn't have enough lifeboats for every passenger, and the lifeboats they did have were underfilled, meaning around 1,600 people ended up in the freezing cold water. Around 40 to 80 people were supposedly pulled out of the water, which leaves approximately 1,500-ish that died in the water. But the question we're looking at today is were any of those 1,500 people that died attacked and killed by sharks. Some people have pointed to bodies that were recovered from the water in a damaged and mangled state as evidence for shark attacks. Others say that the noise of the ship going down and the vibrations from the thousands of people in the water would have been picked up by sharks who were miles and miles away. But first, I think we should have a look at whether there could have been any sharks in that area at all. Thankfully, due to some pretty epic discovery work, Robert Ballard discovered the exact location of the Titanic's final resting place in July 1985. So that means we know that the Titanic sank right about here in the Atlantic Ocean, which is around 400 miles off the east coast of Newfoundland in Canada. I think when people think of the Titanic because of the freezing cold waters and the iceberg that struck the ship, they presume that it sank much further north than it actually did. Perhaps a little bit more towards the southern tip of Greenland, for example. But this here is about the same latitude as Boston if you went west and Portugal if you went east. It's a lot further south than than you expect it to be. Interestingly, in one of Robert Ballard's books about his discovery of the Titanic, he mentions that he and his team saw a shark at some point. Although I've not been able to find this exact quote online, but a fair few people who have probably read the book do mention it on the internet. If this story from Robert Ballard is true though, and they did see a shark, it would suggest that sharks do frequent the area where the Titanic went down. But these days, lots of shark species have been tagged and can be tracked so we can see their movements in this region of the world. Although looking at some tagged sharks, back in 2018, a great white shark called Nova was tagged just off Nova Scotia, very aptly named, in September here. And then he was again sighted in the same area a year later. And then there was another white shark called Mahone that was tracked off the Frankfurt Seamount, which is here in May 2022. If you look at the distance between those two locations, i.e. the final resting place of the Titanic here and Mahone the white shark here, it's really not that far. Although importantly here, we've got to have a look at the time of year. Robert Ballard discovered the Titanic in July 1985, which means the shark that he and his team supposedly saw would have been swimming around those waters in the summer. Generally, the white sharks that wander up into those Canadian waters do so in the summer months when the water is at its warmest. Yes, there are occasional exceptions to the rule, but this is the general pattern. The temperatures here at this time of year range between 10 degrees Celsius and 22 degrees Celsius, which is just about within the tolerable temperature range for great white sharks. So if the Titanic had sunk in 2022, then I think I could sit here comfortably and say to you that great white sharks could have 
been around the sink site. But the Titanic didn't sink in 2022. It sank in 1912. And based on some of the ships that were nearby, one of which was the Californian, we do actually have some pretty accurate temperature readings. According to Captain Lord, who was sailing the Californian nearby on the same night that the Titanic sunk, the water temperature was 28 degrees Fahrenheit minus two degrees Celsius. That water temperature is without a doubt far too cold for great white sharks to deal with. To be honest, it's far too cold for most sharks to tolerate. But there's definitely at least one shark that can tolerate temperatures of minus two degrees Celsius. And based on its namesake, it could have easily been in and around the waters where the Titanic sank. The shark that I am of course referring to is the Greenland shark. The Greenland shark is considered to be, to the best of our knowledge anyway, to be a scavenger shark feeding on any scraps of food that it can find. Normally it would be feeding along the bottom of the ocean, picking up meals that have sunk to the sea floor, like a whale carcass, for example. But research has revealed that these shark species do move up the water column towards the surface during the winter months when the water is colder. Now, I know I said a second ago that these shark species are mainly thought to be scavengers, but they have been reported to actively hunt seals, sneaking up on them from below and ambushing them while they're sleeping in the water. So in reality, they're considered considered to be both scavengers and occasionally active hunters. To date, there have been no confirmed recorded attacks from Greenland sharks on humans. Apart from one incident in 1859, when a Greenland shark was supposedly found with a human leg in its stomach. Although at the time, this wasn't scientifically investigated or corroborated by anyone else. Now, just because there's been no official confirmed report of a Greenland shark attack on a human, it doesn't mean it hasn't happened ever before. It just means it's never been confirmed. So the Greenland shark is a shark species Species that I believe could have and would have been in the area at the time that the Titanic sank. Okay, right, now we're gonna have to take a look at some of the eyewitness accounts from people who survived the incident. Looking across a fair amount of eyewitness reports and reading into other investigators' accounts of those who survived the incident, not a single person mentions anything about a shark or shark attacks. It does have to be said, I suppose, that those who managed to get into the lifeboats were a fair whack of distance away from those people who were splashing around in the water. I think I read that the closest lifeboat, which was lifeboat number four, was about 50 meters away from those in the water. And at nighttime, in the pitch black after the ship had lost its power and everything was thrust into darkness, even at 50 meters distance, it would have been impossible for any of those people in the lifeboats to witness a shark taking down someone who was in the water. But in contrast to that, those people who were in the water and managed to survive because they were pulled out, which was around 40 to 80 people, none of them mentioned anything about shark attacks in their accounts either. I think this brings us around nicely to some of the claims that were made about bodies that were pulled from the water that were mangled and damaged. One of whom was Colonel J.J. Astor. Astor was one of the richest men in the world at the time of the sinking and was one of the 333 bodies that were retrieved from the water. Reports do differ on the exact state in which he was found, but many claim that his body was disfigured and mangled. Because of this, some people out there claim that this was as a result of a shark attack, but historians and fanatics of the incident believe he was actually maimed by one of the smokestacks falling on top of him as the ship was beginning to break up. There's also other accounts of debris shooting towards the surface as the ship started to break up as it sank deeper and deeper, and that could have definitely maimed some of the bodies that were in the water. Although I know of no other descriptions out there from the 333 bodies that were recovered that suggests sharks were involved. Thinking about the water temperatures as well, it's unlikely that many people survived for long enough for the sharks to turn up. In water temperatures of minus two degrees Celsius, your body goes into cold shock almost immediately. And when you're in that state of shock, you can easily swallow seawater and drown or even have a heart attack. For most of those that manage to stave off that cold shock and not drown or have a heart attack, in temperatures that low, they probably would have died within 15 to 30 minutes of being in the water. 15 to 30 minutes, it's barely any time at all. It's just not enough time for the sharks to get there, especially something as slow moving as a bloody Greenland shark. The only real chance of something like that happening would have been if a Greenland shark just happened to be in the exact same place at the exact same time that the Titanic sank. Not impossible, but pretty unlikely. Considering all this though, as those bodies began to drift around the North Atlantic in the currents or sink to the sea floor, I would say it's entirely possible 
that some were scavenged on by sharks. Currents could have taken the floating bodies 50 to 100 miles away from where the Titanic actually sank, whereby any marine scavenger could have fed on them. And the same could be said for the bodies that sank pretty close to the Titanic's final resting place. Marine scavengers like lobsters, crabs, hagfish, marine worms, all would have consumed the dead. And the chances of one of those scavengers being something like a Greenland shark is pretty likely. You only have to take a quick look at a whale fall to see just how many marine species will capitalize on that food item. As to there being shark attacks while the people were still alive and splashing around in the water, Although we can't say it for 100% certainty, based on the evidence that we have and the ocean temperatures that night, I would say it is highly unlikely that there were any shark attacks. But like I said before, opportunistic feeding events from scavenger sharks in the days, weeks, and months after the Titanic sank probably happen. In the ocean, especially one like the North Atlantic, food can be pretty scarce and many of the animals that live there will eat whatever they can to survive. Scavenger predators are everywhere and are in all the oceans and will rarely pass up on the opportunity for an easy free meal. I think a pretty interesting thought here is though, is that if there were scavenging attempts from Greenland sharks on this night, based on how long this species lives for, those individuals that did that would still be alive today. Right, okay, that's enough rambling for me on this topic then today. If you guys wanted a TLDR based on the title, then my answer is no, probably. What do you guys reckon went down on that night then? Were there any shark attacks after the people went in the water from the Titanic? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. As always, if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. But if you were after a video about shipwreck where there were shark attacks, then you should definitely click on this video right here. In that video, I go in depth into the sinking of the USS Indianapolis during World War II. In it, you'll hear my thoughts on just exactly how many shark attacks there were for that incident and we get to the bottom of why the sharks attacked in the first place. So make sure you click it here.